Today's episode of The Mom Game is brought to you by our friends at Gateway Buick GMC at LBJ and Jupiter. I know that buying a car can be stressful, but not at Gateway because their slogan is Gateway's Got It. And just what does that mean? Well, it means Gateway's got a wide selection of new Buicks, GMCs, and GM certified used vehicles, all competitively priced. Gateway's Got It. In these busy times, you want a dealer who makes things easy and convenient. Well, guess what? Gateway's got it. When you log on to gatewaybuickgmc.com, look for the shop, click, drive button. This allows you to shop from the comfort of your home, and who doesn't want that? In fact, it's easy as one, two, three. One, select your vehicle. Two, create your offer. And three, schedule your delivery. On top of all this, Gateway Buick GMC offers complimentary car washes for life. I can attest to this one. So when you want a dealer who has it all, Gateway's got it. You can find them online at gatewaybuickgmc.com or shop in person at LBJ and Jupiter. GMC, we are professional grade. Experience the new Buick. And this episode of The Mom Game is also proudly brought to you by the McCoy team at Affiliated Bank Mortgage. The world around us is crazy and unsettled right now for all of us. So whether you're wanting to stay put in your current home or wanting a change of pace, the McCoy team is here to help. Getting pre-qualified before you are ready to sell and or purchase is always the first step in the process. Interest rates are at an all-time low, which means now is the perfect time to buy or refinance. There are a lot of mortgage companies that will sift you through their automated processes, but that's not how the McCoy team operates. When you call, email, or text Mike or his team, you'll get an actual human on the other end, answering your questions and setting you up with honest guidance. I know because I live with the man and he is constantly on his phone. Mike and his team operate in full disclosure, much like me, and will get you prepared for any purchase or refinance. Here's the deal, though. He is not going to get you in over your skis. If you can't afford a new purchase or refi, he is absolutely not going to recommend it. I know it may sound cheesy and I know I'm biased, but my dude will take care of you. So will his team. This is their thing and they take great pride in it. And I am proud of them for that. So give him a holler, 817-987-2200, or schedule a free no-obligation consultation at McCoyTeamMortgage.com. FDIC insured, NMLS, number 402132, equal housing lender. Give him a call, y'all. And we are back here on The Mom Game. Emily, last week we had our moms on the show. Yeah, we did. Today, another very special guest. And this shows just uh, the range of our guests here on the Mom Game. Because we're going from both of our moms to the one and only Mike Madonna, ladies and gentlemen. Mike, thank you so much for joining us. From your moms to Mr. Mom. (laughs) (laughs) That's exactly right. Mr. Mom. And we have so much to get into with you, first of all. It's just been A long time since we've seen you. It's so good to see your face, and we're so thankful for you joining us here on the show. So thank you so much, and uh, great to see you again, friend. No, it's great to see you guys. I haven't seen you girls in a long time, so I'm I'm happy uh, your lives are so well. Kids, family, everybody's kind of moving on in the real world, so it's been... uh, it's been great on my side, but uh, it's always nice. I keep track of you guys. I'm always watching you on social media, see what you guys are into. So I'm never oh, well, too far away. Yeah, yeah. And Mike, not much has been going on in the 10 years since you've retired, <laughs> huh? <laughs> Fill us I in. I like to think not. My whole world's been turned upside down. I thought hockey was hard, but this uh, okay. five kids and counting, this is, it's this amazing. is no joke. It's amazing. I uh, follow your lovely wife, Allison, on Instagram. I feel like it's just like a reality show. Every, every you know, few months, years, there's another kid popping up and it just looks like your hands are full, but it looks so fun. And it's so cool to see that side of you. So for people that may not know, can you just take us through the journey post-retirement till now and how, how everything's unfolded for you? Well, we, uh, the re- Retirement was 2011. We uh, we got married uh, about two years after I retired. I think it's you know been eight years now, so it's been crazy. Um, you know, we moved a couple times in Dallas. We figured we we're going to have an expanding family. We didn't think it would go this big, but uh, we uh, I, I'd spent some time in Phoenix with Allison playing golf and traveling. So I I kind of liked the area. I thought maybe a little change of pace and see what uh, Arizona was all about. And we ended up staying and. And then, uh, boy, the, the kids come, came left and right. So, uh, <laughs> we, uh, 
we hunkered down here for a little while. We were thought about moving to Utah. Um, and then number five came in along during our Thanksgiving break uh, about a year and a half ago, just before the pandemic. So we came back to Scottsdale just to get checked up and everything to see if everything was okay early on in the pregnancy. And then um, COVID hit. So we, we shut her down. We didn't go back. We stayed here. And then, and then uh, that's it. So um, yeah, our twins are, uh, Twins are six and a half. They'll be seven in July. Uh, Jack and Kate. Reese is four. She'll be five in August. Luca's two. He'll be three in October. And then uh, Quinn's uh, fresh off the, the line. So she's uh, about six months into it. So she'll be, oh, uh, she'll my be gosh. one October 22nd. So that's it. So we have uh, school. We have hockey, baseball, basketball, tennis, um, soccer, flag football. So we've, we've had a busy fall. They're all into everything. So yeah. it's like, we, we need, we need uh, about three other drivers. <laughs> I was just about to ask, how does logistically, how does it, how does it work? I mean, I have two and I can barely keep up. How do you make it work logistically with five and manage to stay married, by the way? Like that's my, I'm like, <laughs> look at me. I made it through another day. My kids are alive. They're breathing. They're asleep. And I still have a husband. This is, I deserve a glass of wine. Like <laughs> what, how do you reward well, yourself at the end of the day with five? Man, <laughs> a, a happy hour starts a half hour every <laughs> earlier. Every like, seems like every couple months, you know, so now it's starting around four uh, mountain time. So, um, but we, we try to take a ske- look at the kids' schedules before we commit to anything, but we've always been one to say, we're going to get our kids in every sport possible and just see what they really like to do. So it, it's a little bit of a, a commitment. We're kind of bouncing all over the place, but you know, there's something probably almost every other night uh, with these kids, but you know, I take one or two and then the, Allison to take a couple to uh, their events. So we got it chronologically. We got it set up in a good system, but uh, there's there's times that we cross paths and, and some can't make it. So I um, forgot where I was going on this question, but uh, just, just how to juggle uh, it all. Yeah, yeah. The logistics. Yeah, it's just it's it's man, it's just uh, it's just busy and constant, but we love it. Um, but I was going to say, but, it, you know, we've been on quarantine since probably our first couple of twins. So we, we never worked. We kind of stayed at home parents. We're kind of doing our thing. You know, so we've had a voluntary quarantine. So this pandemic's really never kind of uh, put us in any uh, arm's way because we're around each other all the time, every day. So, yeah, we have our moments where we're like, you know, you're not changing the diaper that the wrong way. You're not giving her uh, like, oh, we just start picking apart everybody's little uh, our little idiosyncrasies of what we do with kids. So it's and sometimes uh, we just take timeouts and. One of us goes hikes for about three hours and takes a break. Yeah, yeah. That's timeouts are not just for kids. No, timeouts are absolutely no. for grownups, <laughs> for sure. One hundred percent. You're not going to keep your sanity if you don't. You gotta, you gotta voluntarily take your, raise your hand and say, I gotta check out for a while because if I stay in this moment right now, I'll probably do or say something I'm gonna regret and uh, someone's gonna get hurt. Wow. Okay. So my question for you, like 15, 20 years ago, when you're in the prime of your NHL career, and that's the number one thing in your life, right? It's playing hockey. It's waking up every day, going to morning skate, going to practice, trying to score goals, get the assist, whatever, lead your team to a Stanley Cup. Did you ever imagine this life for you following your hockey career? Could you have ever imagined Mike Madonna being Mike Madonna, dad of five? Not a five. I thought there might be two, three tops in there. I thought at some point, I think I was a very selfish player in the sense where I was, when I was playing, I was so into what I was doing. Like I didn't want, I tried to avoid any distractions, um, you know, relationship wise or anything to kind of, that would affect me playing. I don't know. I was just kind of a, a little crazy in that sense, but I I do dream, right? (laughs) What's that? I said, that's a coach's dream. I know. I know. <laughs> Hitch loved that. Yeah, I bet. Um, but uh, I do miss it in the sense that I wish I was still playing and, and was able to drag the boys to the locker room and hang out and just kind of see that experience and that lifestyle. They 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 still don't get a grasp on what I do um, other than if someone asks for a picture at an airport and they're traveling with me the last, Oh, was that a friend of yours? Uh, who was that? So they don't have a concept of what was, what was going on. So, um, in a way that's good, but 
To your question, Julie, I, I, never, I never thought in a million years I would be out of Texas, let alone have five kids and, uh, and work in the way we are right now with this group. Wow. T- tell me about your wife. Uh, what, what was it about her that drew you to her and, and said, you know, I'll, I'll, this, this woman's it, and not only is she it, but I, let's have five kids. Um, it was pretty instant. We were met, we were introduced through a mutual friend, actually a, a golf coach out of Orlando. I was kind of obsessed with hockey after, I mean, golf after retiring. So I was always trying to get better and see teachers and really kind of a mentally just kind of out there with golf. So he, he sent me to this guy in Orlando. Um, and Allison was actually seeing the same guy. And so he said, oh, you need to come back. Uh, in a couple of weeks, I'm working with a student. I think you'll know her. You'll know her. So I said, oh, what's her name? So she said, uh, Allison Micheletti. I'm like, I said, wow, I know, I know that name, Micheletti. He goes, yeah, that's, that's, that's Joe Micheletti's daughter. I was like, oh, man, I don't know if that's going to fly too well with Joe. And because <laughs> uh, I've known Joe since I was 18. He did our games when I was with Minnesota. He's with the Rangers, done NBC. So him and I have been good friends for, God, 30 plus years now. So um I had a a moment where that's not going to fly in Joe's uh, Joe's world. So uh, we played golf, and then uh, I came home, and you know, uh, uh, we talked about uh, the guy who set me up. We talked about it, and uh, I went back again, played some more, and then she came out to Dallas for an event uh, around Labor Day, and that was it. You know, a year later, we were married. Okay, so at what point did you make the call to Joe to get that kind of early blessing or did you get it? <laughs> um, we went to New York to see them that year at Christmas. We went to New York for about a week. So we kind of talked about it a little bit then. Um, I came back to, we came back to Dallas. Uh, we went back to actually Orlando to see the guy who got, set us up, get married, uh, Gio Valientes. We went to his wedding um, but before going to Florida, we went back to New York in May and that's when I kind of talked to him about him a little bit more, a little more serious about it. And then, uh, and then after Orlando, we went to Mexico and proposed down there in Cabo and, and that was it. So, uh, um, that September we were married and I think, uh, boy, that around Thanksgiving, I think she was uh, pregnant with the twins. So well, not wasting any time. No, no. <laughs> she, she knew she was up against the clock with yeah. my, my program and my, uh, <laughs> my time frame. So she's like, Hey, this is going down. We're doing this like, uh, uh, yesterday. So it, it happened quick. So it was, wow. it was fine. I knew, uh, in a sense, I'm glad I waited. I'm glad I'm been around for, to see everything. I don't miss anything. So I I'm pretty fortunate in that sense. You mentioned that it's kind of hard to believe now that you're even out of Texas. And I, I think a lot of people here in Dallas, feel that way and, and miss you being a part of the Dallas Stars organization. Life happens and, and we understand, we get it. But um, I'm just wondering from your perspective, how that all unfolded. I know you took a role with the team after your career um, and now you're working some with the Minnesota Wild, which is great that you can continue your role in hockey. But how did that uh, transition unfold for you? And do you still watch Stars games? <laughs> oh, yeah, I still I still keep in keep tabs on the guys and, and, and the guys that I know there, obviously. So not too many left that when I played, I mean, I think Jamie might be yep. the last guy I played with that uh, was part of that uh, last couple years of my career in Dallas. But um, yeah, things change. I, I I've learned to say, never say never. I think in this life, you never can say what you're going to be doing from one year to the next. Um, but uh, yeah, I think once I moved out here, I think I knew, things would change in Dallas. I was, it was going to be tougher to commute. Um, and then I just stepped away. I didn't do anything for five, six years. And then a mutual friend in Arizona was good friends with Craig Leopold, the owner of the wild. And, uh, he suggests that maybe Craig and I talk and, and that kind of led to a couple trips to Minnesota, watch some games with them. And then, um, you know, so it, it kind of led to this position about helping him out. And then we kind of helped spearhead getting the GM and, and hiring Bill Guerin, um, you know, so it's been a lot of fun. I, I kind of dabble a little bit on the, on the business side and hockey side, helping Billy and Dean Emerson, who I played with, who's the coach. So, uh, but yeah, l- learning the different departments on how the whole team functions day to day is, is a lot, a lot of moving parts. So, yeah. um, I've enjoyed that part too. So, um, you know, I think always the process was trying to 
actually moved to Minnesota at some point to be closer and be a part of that, uh, that culture there. I, I loved Minnesota when I played there. I love the Midwest from being from Michigan. So, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I don't take for granted any of those days in Dallas. I mean, those were some of the best, funnest years I've had playing and uh, the success we had and winning. There's, yeah. There were no better springs than, uh, you know, 98 to 2001, those springs in summer playing hockey. Those are the funnest times of my life. So what do you see? For like, obviously, you've got your hands full as a father. P- professionally, are you cool with where you are right now? Do you think you might do something uh, a little more in depth once the kids get older, or do you think you found a sweet spot? Uh, I think it's been pretty sweet so far with Minnesota. I think it's been really kind of, it's worked both ways. I think, I hope they've got a sense of, uh, there's some, uh, some value to them for me being involved. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that go to those games that went to North star games. So there's always this, there's a small knit community there. Um, I think they've turned the corner a little bit as far as their team's concerned in Minnesota, getting back into the, the, the top part of that league. But, um, I've, uh, I'm comfortable in it. I know time's kind of hard to give up a little bit when you've got kids and you're mm-hmm. kind of running around and, and you're, you're, you're fortunate and lucky enough to kind of not miss birthdays and go to sporting events and travel and, and have some free time, but there is a balance there. And I, I think thus far it's worked out great. And you guys, I know you're spending a lot of time in park city, you said, and you guys like to ski. Is that a whole family event? Have I mean, I know you have a, a baby who is not skiing yet, <laughs> but do you bring all of the kids when you go skiing? Because I can't even imagine just bringing my son at this point and trying to teach well, him how to go downhill on a mountain with things on his feet. I, I mean, it takes maybe a good hour and a half to get out the door because of <laughs> all the stuff we have to take for them to wear. I mean, they got two layers of stuff. They got ski the outer layer. I mean, then you got the helmet, the skis, the gloves, the mask. I mean, oh, it's just like so and, much room for okay, error. So can I just tell you, the, can the, the, I, the, go ahead. Go, I just want, so my husband is dying for us to be a skiing family. I've skied like twice. Our kids have never been skiing. He skied, but he's not like super hardcore about it. My whole thing is now I'm like, I'm 43. I'm rocking like a torn meniscus already with like a cortisone shot in it. <laughs> I like to run every day. I don't like to be cold. And I'm like, I'm not schlepping their, schlepping their shit I know. all effing day. <laughs> it's hard enough to get them to, to where I can like be miserable and cold. Like the last time I went skiing, <laughs> like I went down a hill and like my skis up here and I'm cussing, trying to get the ski back. And I'm, I'm like, there's nothing fun to me about this. Like I will go and I will <laughs> drop you off at the, wherever I need to drop you off. I will come home cook up a casserole or some shit and then pick you back up. I am not doing this. I'm not doing what is, I don't understand. And I think if you've grown up skiing and that's your thing, fine. But I'm like, we're too fucking late to this thing. We are way too late. I'm too old. No, you're not. This Mike's old, doing it no, with five. But he's a fucking professional hockey player. Like, <laughs> a lot of people see that are not professional, professional like, not athlete. happening. It's not, it's not. So I'm glad to hear that oh someone goodness. who even loves cold and loves skiing is still like, it's a beating carrying all these kids crap everywhere. Well, Park City is, we're, we're kind of lucky there in that sense, because Park City's not like uh, Canada cold or Minnesota cold. I mean, it's, it's cold, obviously, because you need to kind of create snow, obviously, for skiing. Um, but uh, there is a... There is a stretch there of a couple of years where you feel like this 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 uh, commitment is just all for naught. Like, where are we getting to this point? But but now we're it's been a couple of years, but we're at the point where the twins are killer. They just they fly around like wow. crazy, and they don't have a fear in their bones. And I'm like, they're in and out of trees and trails, and I'm like you, Emily. I'm like. I'm over here on the nice groomed <laughs> uh, green, mm-hmm. maybe a blue square slope. <laughs> and they're like going, you know, they're going a hundred miles an hour. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm not going in there. Cause I'm the same way. If I get hurt doing this now in my life, I will be oh my gosh. forever pissed off that I haven't got into this skiing thing. But we're, we're like, there's, we're over that hump. But there's nothing more fun. I know this is my part that I love is that with the twins, they're they're self-efficient. Now they carry all their crap. They got it. Okay. They can carry it. 
they're they're good that way. They can get dressed, which was a game changer because trying to dress three of these kids in snow gear and ski gear, oh it's like I'm in a dead sweat after like two <laughs> hours getting this thing done. And then and then um so I mean, going back, the best part is the chairlift ride. I mean, we get on there with the twins, and you know, it's about I don't know, four or five minutes, six minute run to the top on the lift. But I mean, when you're alone with your kids and you hear what that comes out of their mouth, like oh. it, it, it is a riot. And it's like, okay, now I've, the, all that grunt work we do for hours might be worth the five minute yeah. ride up the chairlift. But um, to your point, yeah, it's, it's a commitment. It's a lot of work. I mean, skiing for kids is just, it's crazy, but Boy, I'm like the, the three old ones now are just like I said, they're darting around like crazy, and so that that makes it fun for us. Finally, finally, and, but yeah, for and, like two years, I'd say it's shaky. I'm like, okay, let's go back to maybe uh, um, the beach, or let's sit and make sandcastles, or do something. But you know, we're 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 the kind that can't sit still now. Yeah. We we can't sit on the beach because we'll just watch our nest cam of all the kids back home and like, okay. Two nights, two days in Cabo. We we're going home. It's a five day trip. I'm like, okay, what what was that point for? Why did we even go there? So <laughs> that's a um, good point. At least point. the skiing. At least yeah. the skiing. You're all. You can do it together. You know, we can leave some at home and take the old ones. And uh, so that's uh, why you, you feel like a sharpa someday with all that gear. Oh, I bet. I'm I'm inspired because I grew up skiing and I loved it. I loved when my parents would take me skiing. And my parents were divorced, so I kind of it's a good thing with divorce. I got to go twice a year because mom would take me, dad would take me. And I felt like it was almost like a little competition. They both wanted to take us skiing. So we went all the time. But now as a mom, I'm like, I can't even imagine doing that. I'm like, you know what? Get your shit together and take your kids skiing. And after hearing you just say how awesome it is and and that feeling that your kids probably have when they're going down a mountain for the first time and then talking to you about it afterwards, we should do it, Emily. I know, and now I feel like I'm robbing my kids of this fantastic experience. Yeah, I know. Experience. Now you feel guilty. I do. Bad. But let me but tell you something. I, like, I, like Julie said, I grew up skiing. Um, there were some decent hills in northern part of Michigan, and we made a couple trips out to Calgary, Bam. So I grew up till I was probably 18 skiing, and then obviously for reasons you can't ski and, you know, schedule-wise. So that was one of the first things I wanted to get back into when I was done playing is is start taking some ski trips. So it's been, uh, awesome. it's been fun. So if you do guys go to park city, call us, I'll have Allison run you through the okay. checklist of what you got to yes. do before you come up here. So it well, that definitely makes, makes it little, more enticing. A little smoother yeah. and yeah. for everybody. If well, someone, if someone can help, that's for sure. Yeah. Yes. Okay. On an, on a, a similar subject. So, and maybe I'm a terrible mother, but my whole deal is with my kids is if they're not begging for something, I'm not going to spend thousands of dollars to do it. So I, they're not begging to go skiing. They're all, they also have not begged to go to Disney. So my kids have not, they, it's come up in passing, but I'm like, unless you are hounding me 24 seven, yeah. I'm not dropping 10 dimes <laughs> to go visit Mickey and Minnie. Right. And yeah. I feel yeah. like I might be a terrible, a terrible parent because of that. But I, I understand I, I, the Disney cruise worked out very well for you. Right. It's, it, <laughs> just I guess. <laughs> Um, but we love, that was our fourth one. We love oh the Disney gosh. cruise. So okay. it's a little more, it's confined. Um, you know, you got the, the water slides, you got all the characters, you got theme areas, you know, the kids have so much to do. They get a little GPS on their wrist so they can go off and do anything on the boat with anybody. And we can track them down and somewhat, and they got a little adult section so you can get rest, you know, great dinners, a little pool bars, you know, coffee shops for the adults. But yeah, I, I thought I'd never been on a cruise till the, the Disney one. And it was like, I mean, Disney does it, you know, first class. I mean, they don't spare any expense. I mean, their, their cruises are great. Everything's t- done top notch. So, um, yeah, I can't, I, I can't do the Orlando Disneyland. I don't think right now at this point, but you're right. If the kids aren't begging me to do it, like they started, they finally started asking us, when are we going back to ski in park city? I was like, you want to go back? I'm like, okay. So now I'm now they're into now it. I feel good about going yeah, because they're, they're asking and they're begging. And you know, sometimes Jack will say, "Hey, let's go skating." So I'm like, "You want to go skating?" I'm like, "Okay, grab. Let's grab our gear. We'll go up to the rink and mess around." So as soon as that they ask you, it's like, "Oh man, that that's a you know," because otherwise you're dragging them, kicking and screaming. But 
to us, we didn't know if they didn't like it or not until we dragged them to go there. So, yeah. but you know, some stuff worked, some didn't, but, um, I know, uh, you know, the Disney cruise, the Disney cruise hands down is, is, is the thing that they can't wait. They beg all year long. So we, we kind of usually do the, the post Thanksgiving trip, which is about a week long and it's kind of like a Christmas, uh, new year theme. So it's great. But yeah, if, like Emily, like you said, if, Finally, they start asking to do stuff. Wow, that was that was <laughs> yeah. that was a moment. yeah. And I feel like that's a, I, maybe the cruise is my ticket. Yeah, maybe I've heard it. that because about it's the not cruise. this. It's 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 kind of it's easier. It's not so. I don't yeah. know. Maybe the cruise is the ticket. Mm-hmm. Scheduled activities, yeah, child care, it's child care. Oh, they got kids club. You can drop them off at like five. We pick them up at night. We go to a nice you know dinner at night. Um, pick them up and they go want us to go see, you know, they want to go see their characters and Mickey and, uh, um, God, you name it. Uh, I can't even think of any of the Everybody Disney from like, Frozen. Like anybody. Yeah. 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 Elsa and Anna and everybody <laughs> else are all floating around the boat. So, uh, you know, then there's dance parties at night for the kids. So it's, it's no, it's a no brainer and it's very reasonable. It's not crazy expensive, probably like even going to Disneyland is, but so it's, and it's, it's short and they got a Disney, uh, Island. It's just decked out with everything yeah. you can imagine that they have. So it's, it's a great deal. We looked into it. I remember seeing the Disney Island and thinking, okay, that's yes. legit. Um, okay. Yep. So you mentioned, uh, Jack is Jack your oldest, right? Jack and Kate are six. Jack yep, and Kate, the tw- they're twins. Um, okay. So he's, he's gotten out on the ice. Some, what is yep. that whole, um, aspect of things like for you right now, when it comes to him skating, playing hockey and, and just generally coaching, or teaching your kids to play to play sports in general. What kind of dad are you when it comes to that regard? I imagine um, very standoffish, <laughs> okay. not very hands on with saying you got to do this. Okay, this is how you stride and carry the puck, and uh-huh. you know, this is you know do this. I, I was always the one when I was a kid. I was like, I learned just by doing it. I didn't have anybody really kind of structuring me with fundamentals or whatever. I just would go on the ice and kind of learn as I go. And same with baseball and football and stuff like that. It's just kind of throw him in the game. Um, you know, he, he started flag football about a year and a half ago. And, and I was like, man, this is going to be tough to watch. I'm like, I don't know. He, he does have no idea of the concept. Probably never watched two minutes of football, but he was, we we're playing catch in the back. And he's like, oh, I want to play. Um, I was like, flag football. I was like, <laughs> so we went to a couple, we went to a couple of the first practices. I was like, I go, wow. I go, if he doesn't want to go back next week, I'll know why. Cause it's just really, you know, hard to pick up and the rules and th- what's going on by the end of it. I mean, he was, you know, stiff arming guys wow. and keeping hands away from the flag. So their brain processes things really quick. And I, I just feel like, um, you know, Kate's a perfectionist, you know, like her mom, like she wanted the perfect swing, the perfect jump shot, you know, soccer, the whole thing. Kate's a lot like that. Jack's just like, he just wants to go hundred miles an hour, which kind of what I was as a kid, there really wasn't anything that kind of wear me down, but except for hockey. So, um, it's helpful in that sense where I, at least I found a sport I can wear them out in. Yeah. And I, I want, I'm seeking some parental advice. So Henry, my, both my kids are highly competitive. Um, and my husband and I both are pretty competitive just by nature, but with Henry, he's nine plays basketball, football, baseball. Um, quarterback in football, but baseball, kind of a slugger. Now he's not very fast. Uh, he's kind of a bruiser in basketball, doesn't get the ball much, big rebounder, all that kind of stuff. He wants to be all time, everything. He wants to be all time point guard, lead the team in points, all time quarterback, never throw an interception, uh, you know, uh, all those things. And so he's trying to be so he's not, we're still learning how to deal with failure and how, how much of, a part of sports failure is. So trying to, is that something, how, what were you like as a kid? Is that something you just learn? Is it a good thing for him to be competitive? Do I need to get some outside help for this? Like he's just so competitive. Um, I don't think I was at the competitive nature, like you're talking, but our daughter Kate is like that. So if she doesn't do something well, boy, they're, no one's going to be happy the rest of the night in the house. Oh. She will just ruin everybody's world if she doesn't <laughs> do well in her game or well at practice or she's messed something up. Boy, everybody's going to feel hear about it. Um, so, uh, I mean, 
we try to explain that whole concept like, you know, there's going to be days where you do really well and days you do really bad that just don't go your day, but there's going to be another day. You're going to have another chance and opportunity at it. Um, you know, so we're, we're trying to explain things, you know, when we were athletes and playing and it just, it really just doesn't come through into yeah. their, <laughs> yeah. their scope, their mind. So, um, oh man, it's like, but I was, I was always, a, I was afraid of failure more than uh, freaked out if I didn't do well. Like if I went up to bat as a little leaguer and their bases were all, I'd be crying like a baby. I was like, I'd be sobbing. Like, I don't want to go hit. I don't want to strike out with bases loaded. Right. Really? God, my mom and dad would just be cursing at me to get my ass up to the plate and swing and play, you know? So, I but mean, then later in your, I mean, when you, but when you, I mean, in hockey, you, you wanted the that. The killer like, instinct you were like, was there. Bring it. Yeah. So it's not... That's- I think you, yeah, you adapt that. And I think you just really kind of grow into that deal because, um, and, and baseball is really hard. It's more, you know, there's that one-on-one thing where you either hit the ball, you don't strike out, whatever. So there's this one-on-one with the pitcher mm-hmm. where I think hockey was a little bit more my deal because, you know, you have guys out there with you, you're working on the same thing. You got line mates, whatever, teammates, whatever, uh, baseball in that sense is, is a little bit the same, but boy, just being up there by yourself batting, it's like, it's all you at that particular moment. Um, so, um, I had a hard time with that, but if I was, I was more safety and numbers kind of kid, I, I'm like, I could hide if things don't go well out there. It's not my fault. Maybe it's someone else's that sort of thing. But, uh, um, it, it's interesting to see our kids kind of totally polar opposites of this perfectionism and this other, our Jack's like, he could care less what he does and what's, what, what happens in the outcome. He'll, he still comes home and he'll do the same thing. Yeah. So we had, um, we've had a lot of debate on the ticket just after watching the Tiger Woods documentary and about his dad and the way that he fathered him through golf and got him going. I'm guessing you've, you saw that documentary. Yeah. I'm wondering your take because from, from what it sounds like, it sounds like you're more kind of let the game come to your kids. Mm-hmm. And if they show interest in it, then you can jump in and get them, obviously, the resources, the things, the coaching that they need. Um, and, and we went back and forth on the station, like some guys saying, no, if you see that your child has that gift like Tiger did, you it's your duty to get in there and make sure that he's a champion. And I was kind of on the other side of it and obviously raising a son as well. Um we're talking about that a lot. So I'm wondering what your take on, uh, on Tiger and Earl Woods was and how that applies maybe to your role with your kids in their sports. Um, I think, uh, I think Allison and I are kind of on the same page there. We, we try to get them to do everything and anything just to kind of, I don't know, give them a taste of everything. I think there's a lot of parents that when we're around, they tell their child, okay, we're going to pick one sport and you're going to stick to it. You know, this is it. I, I, I don't know if that's laziness on their part or they just don't want to sign up for multiple sports and have to jump around all over the town or maybe they don't have the time to do it. Yeah. Um, and the uh, the commitment to do it. So um, but, uh, um, you know, the the Tiger thing was interesting at some point when the Tiger went to his teacher and asked him, you know, could you talk to my dad because I want to play some other sports? Yeah. And uh, Earl says he's not playing on the other sports. You know, he's this is his deal. Hockey, uh, golf's his deal. He's going to stick to it. That's so, the part that struck um, me because mm-hmm. you you hadn't heard those kinds of stories. And coming from his teacher, it was like well, that's almost a cry for help. In in my opinion, yeah, it, it it was a little bit. I think he, uh, you know, he's, you know, and I think at that point, from when they see the Earl Tiger relationship, I think parents are dying to see something like that with their kid, where they can just sports specific them mm-hmm. mold them into this champion and kind of live maybe their life through their child. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe something that they're missing or some success financially make some money, you know, this and what, or just try to some popularity thing. So I, I, you, you know, you, you see that in a lot of parents where they, they push and push hard and then the kid doesn't want to do it when he's 12 or 13 or 11 years old, he's done, he's quit. He's, burnt out and you know he doesn't want to do it anymore so it's a real uh it's a real I guess fine line but uh I I think in our situation is different because we're home we can take them here and take them there we're we're not strapped to it 
a job per se, other than being a mom and dad. So we, we have the flexibility to do this, uh, a variety of sports. So, mm -hmm. and I feel like of all, I, and I, I've asked this question to a, a million, not a million, but a lot professional athletes that I've co covered, like what advice would you give? And, and I, I feel like almost every one of them says, let them play as many sports as they can early on, let them figure out what it mm -hmm. is. And also too, I don't know if it's so specific to baseball, but so many people, I feel like early on, they, they their kids get, they're getting injured. They're get, they're, they're doing stuff to their bodies that they're not meant to be doing. They're not meant to be playing baseball, throwing baseballs as hard as they can year round. And I don't know if I, that, that's, I would, I would assume that's the case with all this, with every sport. I mean, your, your body's just not, I mean, I mean, maybe in basketball running's not a bad thing, but you know, it just, it doesn't hurt to expose your kids to as many things as you can. Mm hmm yeah, it's, it's really become like so sports specific, like yeah. even the training, like the skill set that these people are teaching these kids at an early age. And, you know, some of it's fundamentals, but um, there's I mean, there's really a, uh, seems to be like this perception, of like, like spending all these hours, like fine tuning your things. And, you know, the kids aren't growing up and uh, having fun at all and playing outside and doing some things that they might enjoy with their friends and cutting into their time and play time and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I, but I go off when I was growing up, I mean, I, I don't think I, I don't think I lifted weights. I don't think I was sports specific with anything until maybe I was, you know, a sophomore in high school, really 15, 16, when I became really kind of in tune with my craft and really was working on it on a day to day thing, you know, up until that point, it was like, you know, it was kind of everything at that point, a little bit of football and, and, you know, baseball till I was 13, 14. So tennis, I love tennis. I wanted to go to Florida to play tennis when I was in high school, I wanted to go down there um, and see if I could play down there. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, man, it's a, it's, it's a hard deal to, to, uh, to figure out, but I mean, you know, there's clinics and like private, like things you can do one-on-one -on -one just to get the skill set and just kind of work on these kids rather than just let them go out there and be creative and kind of learn on their own and use their imagination in some sense. Yeah. Listen to Mike kids. Seriously. Greatest American well, born hockey player ever to play the game. <laughs> exactly. I, I know he what knows. he's talking about. It's, it's motivating to hear that that didn't really start till age 13, 14. Okay. I have, you. but I have I like one more that. question. I know we've kept you for a while, but I have one Almost question done. and I, this okay. is slightly embarrassing and I don't <laughs> know if you're going to remember this, but it is one of the biggest boneheaded things I have done in my professional career. So do you, and I, you probably don't remember, but when I very first got to Fox Sports Southwest, you came in studio with Rick Renner and I, and I was <laughs> brand new to town. And I think I had like, and to, I, I think I Googled you to like, try to get some background information. And you had had some problems with a financial person or something at one point in your career. And I tried to crack a joke about that. <laughs> like, <laughs> Emily. Oh, 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 trust me. Like, I, I'm breaking out in hives thinking about it. So it was like, hey, Mike, nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. It sucks about that financial guy. I mean, it wasn't that blatant, but I stuck my foot in my mouth so bad. I bet you he doesn't remember. I, well, and now, now you remember because now I'm telling you. But I just want to say... <laughs> I'm so sorry for that. And that is one of the <laughs> dumbest things I have ever done in my entire career. And I will say, for, and that was what, like the first time I met you. Every, was every 21 time. 21 years ago? It was, it was what? 21 it years was ago? 21 years ago. It was. <laughs> and so I will say every time after that, though, you were so gracious. You were so nice. You didn't tell me I was a moron. And so for that, I just want to say, Thank you, Mike Madonna, <laughs> for not making me feel like the idiot that I was when I made that stupid thing and stuck my foot in my mouth. So you've come a long way no. too, Emily. He's probably, probably dealt with probably, a lot. You've He's done probably done well. dealt with a lot. Oh gosh. Yeah. What a professional. And now he's dealing with us here I just sitting here better. drinking wine talking about I just, mom. I feel better now now that I this is the therapy apologize. session as well. It is. <laughs> therapy session. Well we don't want to take any more of your time. I know you've got um one, two, three, four, five people, six including your wife probably waiting for you um to get the oh, whole they're, they're fine. They'll they'll be on they're good on their own. <laughs> they're good on their own own. Um, yeah. okay. So then, so then lastly, just, uh, because I feel like your life these days is just so interesting. So day in the life, Mike Madonna. So, so right now you're in Arizona. Can you talk us through like what time it is there, what you're going to do the rest of the night in, uh, in Moe's world, uh, if you will. Uh, what do we got? It's about time. Do we go on two 30 my time? Yeah. So 
Let me see. It's almost three. What's it? Three fifteen. Uh huh. Um. So yeah, kids will get home here in about fifteen minutes. Three thirty. So they get out at three. Usually it's a pickup. Um, those are my highlights: dropping them off and picking them up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, the, no events, no uh, activities tonight for a change. That's one day of the week that they don't have anything. But we'll go out back. We got a little t-ball set up, a basketball court. We got a net, so they'll shoot some hoops. We'll play some soccer, hit some top, you know, tee balls off the tee for baseball this year, and play catch. And um, I guess this new thing they started because of the social distancing is uh, um, noodle noodle tag. I don't know if it's a big hit in Dallas, but they play tag with noodles from the pool. Oh, how funny! So they're not actually actually touching each other. No, so we have a full out just battle royal with the, two, the noodles. They don't hurt, so it's, we just take. That sounds so fun. Down. I like get it. a little. It helps me get my aggression out towards them. So, <laughs> and uh, and not a sense where they're so many dads can relate. <laughs> call oh, the uh, call the authorities on me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, then we uh, we got dinner. Uh, we whip up a big family style dinner. I think it's uh, salmon tonight, and then uh, we do a little popcorn. They're able to watch. Uh, They'll watch a couple episodes of probably Bluey at some point. Mm, Bluey's and, good. Uh, I like Bluey. The bedtime thing starts. That's a oh. big problem. Bedtime routine it's, is hard because no we have a couple sets of bunk beds. They all love bunk beds. So we said, okay, we're going to put two sets of bunks in one room. And so the three oldest ones sleep together. So, I mean, between the teeth brushing, mm-hmm. the shower, the bath, the pajamas, the story time. Mm-hmm. Um, the scratching of the back. Um, so it, it, we start this process probably by six fifteen. We're out of there at maybe seven forty five. Oh so, my God. and then, uh, and then we eat our cold dinner that we try to make at six o'clock to eat with the kids. So we eat that cold, watch a couple, uh, shows. I don't know if you've watched this all American on Netflix. Uh, my husband was watching it. He's yes. totally into it. We're so into it. So okay. we're, we're, we're halfway through that. So we, we get a couple shows of that and then it's, you know, lights out at God, 10 to latest. Oh, oh yeah. man. Oh yeah. Dad Starts life. All back Mom up life. It's all the same. The I know. And then do it, rinse and repeat, do it yeah. all over uh, again. I feel like there's that moment right after dinner and you clean up dinner and then you kind of sit on the couch for like a second. And you're like, ah, oh. and then Kelly and I will just look at each other like, Who's getting up first? Uh-huh. We know there's so much more ahead of us. We're not even uh, beginning to be done with this night because then you start bedtime. It's just yeah. a never ending marathon. But yeah. I will, but usually you know, the, the wine opens up, yes. up yep. at four. Yes. But I've been on this like Casamigas like kick right now. And so I have like a maybe a three finger pour of this Casamigas and some just squeezed lime. And I'm like, oh, it's just like I got to go back outside and sit on the chair and prepare myself for what's after <laughs> dinner and just. A couple, a couple pulls on that. You're only like, just I'm beginning. For like an hour and a half. Only Mike just Madonna. beginning at happy hour. He's just like us. He really is. He's just, just like, like us. <laughs> You've oh, been wonderful. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. This was so fun. Welcome, guys. Yeah. So cheers. good to see you guys. Yeah, go yeah. get your yeah. pasta, amigos. We will. Thank you so much, Mike. Early right. cheers. All right. Good luck tonight. Good luck out there in Thank the wild. <laughs> Take care, Mo. See you, girls. Bye.